Hi, it's Mark from 3D Enlightenment. Welcome to another Physics of Windsurfing video. I'll be answering two key questions. Does the wind pull or push the sail? And what sail angle provides the most force? In my previous video, I described the wind in terms of particles striking the sail. And I received a number of questions and comments as to why I didn't cover Bernoulli's principle and how the wind pulls the sail. So let's take a closer look at this. Before we get started, I'll go over a couple of important concepts related to aerodynamics. The first one is lift. In aerodynamics, lift is the force which is perpendicular to the wind, and in an aircraft, it opposes the force of gravity and allows the aircraft to fly, literally lifting it up into the air. Drag opposes the force of the movement through the wind, slowing the plane down. The teardrop shape generally reduces the drag. One of the differences between flight and sailing is that in flight, lift opposes the force of gravity, and in sailing, buoyancy opposes gravity. So how does lift and drag relate to sailing? So if we look at the profile of a sail, it has a curve, like the profile of a wing. So when the wind blows, we have the lift force perpendicular to the wind and the drag force downwind. Both forces are generally in a downwind direction. When it comes to explaining lift in sailing or in flight, there seems to be a lot of confusion and a lot of misleading information. For example, you might hear things like the following. Just like an airplane wing, the sail can lift the boat into the wind. They are exactly an airplane wing just stood up on its side. And there are also many publications highlighting the complexity of this issue. So I'll try to explain this through an examination of Newton and Bernoulli's theorems. So let's get into it. So who was Bernoulli? Daniel Bernoulli was a Swiss mathematician and physicist, and in 1738 he noticed that if there was fluid flowing in a pipe and the pipe narrowed, the fluid would flow faster in the narrow sections. But importantly, at the same time, he noticed that there was, were pressure differences within the pipe static pressure on the walls of the pipe and dynamic pressure from the movement of the fluid. He noticed that where the fluid moved faster, the static pressure was lower and the dynamic pressure was higher. Bernoulli recognized an additional pressure when the fluids are flowing due to gravity called hydrostatic pressure, but we can ignore this since gravity is not a factor here. So Bernoulli's principle is also based on ideal fluids with no viscosity, turbulence, or friction. It's also based on the conservation of energy where the total pressure is constant and the total pressure is equal to static pressure plus dynamic pressure. So what does this have to do with flight and sailing? So on an airplane wing, as the air moves over its upper surface, it has been observed to move faster, like the water flowing in the narrow section of the pipe. Through Bernoulli's principle and the conservation of energy, the static pressure on the upper surface of the wing is reduced. And this pressure difference between the upper and lower surfaces results in a lift force causing the plane to rise. I just want to emphasize that this is the static pressure, not the dynamic pressure. Sir Isaac Newton was an English scientist from the 17th century who came up with the laws of motion. The third law basically says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For example, when a billiard ball is hit. The second law is the formula, force is equal to mass times acceleration. When the wind blows with enough velocity, you can feel the pressure. The wind is made up of millions and millions of molecules of gases, which collectively have a significant mass. When those molecules are moving at a high velocity, they have significant momentum, and when they collide with an object, they can impose significant forces. So when it comes to sailing, which is more important, Bernoulli's static pressure differences pulling on the sail, or the Newtonian forces pushing on the sail? So to find out, I built this model of a sail where I could adjust the angle of the sail. and then had a fan blowing steady air at the sail, which then caused a lift force on the sail. This lift force 
caused tension in the string, which then pulled on a lever, which in turn pushed down on a micro scale. Here is the actual model in an operation and you can see the pressure reading on the scale. The model or of the sail or wing is free to move up and down and when the fan is turned off the sail freely falls. The wind speed was relatively constant at about 33 km an hour. I also built an airflow diverter so that the air below the front edge was diverted to the side. This was to measure the static pressure provided by Bernoulli's lift on the sail. So once the data was compiled and averaged, I plotted it on a chart where the x-axis has the sail angle and the y-axis shows the lift force from the scale. The wind speed was constant throughout. This red line shows the lift force increasing as the angle changes with a peak force at about 45 degrees. The air flowing over the top surface only also provided lift, but it was not as great and diminished to zero below, before 45 degrees. So what this shows is that as you are starting out, there's both the lift force from Bernoulli's static pressures and from Newtonian forces, but as the sail is pulled in, the Newtonian forces dominate. But as you know, when you are sailing, the sail is not at 45 degrees to the wind, but it should be about 45 degrees to the apparent wind. I'd also like to point out that the angle of the sail is not constant from top to bottom, as you can see from these images. So to answer the original questions, does the wind pull or push the sail? It primarily pushes. And what sail angle provides the greatest lift? That would be 45 degrees. So are Bernoulli and Newton's theories actually in opposition? Bernoulli has both the static and dynamic pressures. But if you look at dynamic pressures alone and incorporate a surface area component, they're both a reflection of the same force and kinetic energy. Before we move on from this discussion, I just wanted to clarify one more thing related to flight and sailing. So if a plane is moving in a straight line, the airflow from the engine flows parallel to the surface of the wing, generating lift. But once the plane changes direction, we continue to have momentum in the original direction. With the plane on an angle, it creates what is called the angle of attack. When the underside of the wing strikes the ambient air, there is a force transmitted to the wings, pushing the plane upwards, generating additional lift. Since when sailing, we don't have an engine blowing wind constantly in one direction, the ambient wind provides all the force needed to move the vessel. So I hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.